G'day everyone, welcome to SUMSA. Today we're going to talk about the main event that occurred in the world of cybersecurity this month. On August 5th, Apple announced the new features of its iOS 15. The most controversial of these relates to Apple's expanded protections for children, an algorithm that will analyze photos on your phone in search of illegal pornographic content. And this has caused some heated debate. On a base level, what is it? A gross interference in your privacy? or an effective method for protecting millions of children from sexual exploitation. Well, let's enter the debate. Right, before you go all mental, don't worry, I'm not a deep fake and I do exist. Unfortunately, I have COVID. So I'm actually at home self-isolating and I couldn't make the video for you today. Uh, but Lucas, my friend and good colleague from SumSub, is happy to help. So he'll be jumping in in my absence. So I hope you enjoy the video and I'll see you in the next one. Lucas here, your other survival expert in the online jungle. Now, unfortunately, I'm not Bradley wearing a deep fake as you might have guessed. I am a real person, I am myself. Bradley, our dear, dear friend, the suave Brit, is unfortunately sick with COVID. He will be back, you will be seeing him again, and together we will be giving you the information you need to survive online. The new image analysis function on mobile devices became known to the world just a few hours before the official announcement was heard. Now, Matthew Green, a professor at John Hopkins University, was one of the first to report this new technology via Twitter. As it turned out, Green correctly predicted the principle of the algorithm that Apple would use. And he even warned us about two main problems that would appear as a result. The probability of false positives and the abuse by the authorities. The cryptographer not only described these threats, but he even gave an example of how the algorithm's vulnerabilities could be exploited by hackers. How well-founded are these concerns? Well, to answer this question, you first need to understand how computers see images. Any parent knows that babies can recognize faces from as little as two months old. They're able to clearly distinguish uh, other people from surrounding objects, and they can even try to mimic strange facial expressions. Computers, on the other hand, have only learned to recognize faces in photos quite recently. Specifically, at the beginning of the 2000s, it was then that the ideas of the Hungarian mathematician Ha, which were formulated at the beginning of the 20th century, were put into practice. MIT professor Paul Viola, together with Michael Jones, created an algorithm that allows one to determine the appearance of a face in an image. The essence of the algorithm was simple. Faces of any people, regardless of nationality, skin color, has certain characteristic features. For example, the line of the nose is lighter than the areas on the side, the teeth are lighter than the lips, and the areas around the eyes is darker than the forehead or the cheeks. These light and dark aspects of the photo are then compared with simple geometric patterns. If the pattern of a forehead is found in the picture, and then a pattern of the nose and eyes under them is found, even lower the lips and teeth, then we are most likely looking at a person's face. Now this algorithm doesn't require complex calculations, and at the beginning of our century, most digital cameras began to cope with it. Canon engineers first implemented the Viola Jones algorithm in 2008. The algorithm became the basis of face focusing systems in amateur cameras. Now later, this technology was repeated by other manufacturers. If you've ever used such cameras, you probably have also encountered the main problem of the algorithm. It can see faces anywhere where there are none. For example, in landscapes, in the facades of buildings, and such areas are called false positives. But it almost always can identify a face. Even moustached, bearded or glassed faces don't interfere. Only bad lighting, objects in the frame that obscure the face can make it throw out an error. The Viola Jones algorithm has also been used for more complex tasks. For example, it was used in early systems for automated detection of pornographic materials. Now, imagine that you need to write a program that will evaluate photos for the presence of naughty scenes. How can I explain to the computer that the image is suspicious? Let's have a little think about what isn't present in adult material. Clothes. Most of the shots are occupied by naked bodies, or speaking the language of computers, areas of skin color. 
but the color depends on the race, lighting, and applied filters. This is where the Viola Jones algorithm comes to the rescue. With its help, we first find the actors' faces, find out the correct skin color from them, and then determine the areas of the photo that these colors occupy. And then we can send all the suspicious images for manual verification. Such algorithms were very popular due to their simplicity, but unfortunately, they had a significant drawback. They didn't really detect a significant amount of obscene pictures. If the author took the pictures with a large number of foreign objects, for example, they hid the face of the models or they left most of the clothes on, they were not defined by the algorithm as pornography. Such errors are called false negatives. And if errors in autofocus are a minor nuisance, then saved pornographic images can turn into real problems for the owner of the resources into which they are uploaded. Possession of such materials can result in criminal prosecution in both America and the European Union. Programmers tried to create more advanced algorithms to identify patterns for poses and objects, to determine the content from metadata and text descriptions. They even experimented with neural networks and graph comparison technology. Unfortunately, all of these options required significant computing resources and they threw out a large number of errors. So, Therefore, more advanced mechanisms were needed to effectively counteract the porn industry. Microsoft to the rescue. Microsoft engineers took up the development of such systems in 2009. The project was called PhotoDNA. Within the PhotoDNA system, images are not analyzed but rather compared with an existing database which was created by the NCMEC. Now this is an abbreviation short for the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children. This is the name of a non-profit organization that has been searching for missing children since 1984 and helps to overcome the consequences of psychological and sexual violence among young victims. The center's digital archives contain 300,000 images containing child pornography. This archive is called the CSAM, Child Sexual Abuse Materials. Behind each entry is a real criminal offense, and it was these images that became the basis for photo DNA. Each was processed according to a special algorithm. First, it is reduced in size to its base size and processed with brightness and contrast filters. Then it's switched from color mode to grayscale. The resulting image is divided into smaller fragments and the brightness parameters in each of them is calculated and given a value. The result is a small string of letters and numbers called a hash. Different images have different hashes that are unique, just like your fingerprints. But copies of the same photo will have the same hashes even if you change its size, process it with color filters, or even print it out and scan it again. Another interesting property of the hash is that it will not be possible to recreate the original photo from it. There's just not enough information for this. But hashes are short, they're easy to store, and most importantly, easy to compare. If you want to check a suspicious photo, you will have to upload it to the system. The algorithm will calculate its hash and compare it with the database records. If the hash matches one of them, already available in the database, it means that you've uploaded prohibited content. Thus, the system's not comparing the images themselves, but rather their encoded image. The system works quickly and reliably. The only drawback is that it cannot detect unwanted content if it is not present in the database itself. But the errors of false positives are practically excluded. In December 2014, Microsoft allowed registered organizations to use photo DNA. And today, most large network companies do use these algorithms, from Facebook to Reddit. Now, you may or may not have heard about this, but it doesn't change the fact that you've probably sent photos via Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, even via email, and many of those photos have been checked by such an algorithm. So why did Apple's update cause such an outcry? Let's find out what the love child of Jobs and Wozniak is implementing. First of all, it's going to be working as protection from unwanted content on your messenger. The system will work only if one of the participants in the dialogue, the sender or recipient of the message, is a minor. Most likely, the image here will be processed by their own pornography search algorithm. It's too early to say how it works and how effectively it will work. However, I really do like this aspect of the technology. Kids often behave naively online, and I'm sure a lot of us are guilty of sending a saucy pic or two in our youth. An extra filter here really isn't going overboard. Moreover, potential areas in identifying unwanted content don't threaten anything here. If a minor, despite the warning, still wants to see questionable photos, 
they're only really threatened with an awkward conversation from their parents. False positives don't threaten anything. We're not talking about blocking the account here. False negatives will not differ in any way from what is already in the messenger. Yes, unwanted content can still reach the subject, but the probability is far lower than when a filter isn't used. The main controversy is caused by the second part of the security system. After uploading your iOS version 15, a mechanism for checking photos that you want to upload to iCloud will be added to the system. Before you begin your upload, a hash is calculated for each photo and it's then compared with the CSAM database. If there's a suspicious match or two, an Apple moderator will step in and check the photos for you. And if according to the results, criminal content turns out to be on your phone, that information will be transferred to the police. If it turns out that the algorithm works on the principle of photo DNA, you have nothing to fear, even if you save your home entertainment to the cloud system. The system is not trying to determine whether the picture is obscene, but it's only looking for matches with images already recognized as child pornography. The only difference from what Facebook and Google have already implemented is that in Apple's solution, the hash of the photo is calculated on your phone or tablet instead of on the server of another company. For me, this isn't really important. Yes, the probability of a random match of hashes for different photos you know, cannot mathematically be excluded, but it does remain extremely low. Unless, of course, we are talking about deliberately fabricated images. This is theoretically possible, as Professor Grin showed us via his Twitter. The only problem is that the cryptographer from Baltimore used a simplified algorithm. What he did was create a bright but extremely limited model. In real photos, matching hashes will occur much less often than matching fingerprints, for example. Theoretically possible, practically, I don't think so. So what is this panic really about? Has it been caused by the technological ignorance of the populace? Unfortunately, no. The real threat is hidden in the database itself. Theoretically, it can include not only pornography, but for example, extremist symbols or portraits of leaders of religious movements. Anything else that can identify your affiliation to certain organizations and movements. Well, surely this is unlikely to happen. The truth is, the algorithm has actually already been used this way before. Back in 2016, Facebook, Twitter, Google, and Microsoft used photo DNA technology to limit the distribution of Al-Qaeda videos. The companies began to exchange hashes of photos and videos that had terrorists in them, those that described uh, recruitment of militants, or even those that referenced the word of holy war or jihad. Sure, we can agree that international terrorism is evil, but if we look at society nowadays, I'm afraid to imagine who might be declared a terrorist in the next couple of decades. In the end, this decision by Apple is final. Users are not asked whether they want to make the world a little bit better, but they are driven into a brave new world with the iron fist of Apple. Futuristic dystopia, anyone? Well, to resist this, you could just refuse to use iCloud or switch your phone's data to another smartphone. Sooner or later, other manufacturers are going to fall in line behind their monopolistic masters. And in the end, you'll have to forget about privacy in the same way that you forgot about the headphone jack. No more passing the auxiliary cord to your friend in the front seat to DJ, courtesy of Apple Inc. Anyway, my name is Lucas Newman, your down under survival instructor in the digital jungle. Please share your thoughts and doubts about new technology in the comments below. And I promise here at some subs channel, I'll tell you what is not worth being afraid of and what is really a hidden threat. May the knowledge be with you.